Uh, all right, so there's uh, several problems with this thing. We're not getting a nice sine wave out of it. It's, it's not locked, uh, things like that. So if we take a look on the inside here, let me, let me scoot you guys over. I think you can see there's an LED on here. That's the same as the front panel. So this is an unlock condition. There's a couple LEDs in here for troubleshooting, which is kind of nice. Um, but I thought I would uh, start with the basics and uh, just go through it uh, one step at a time here. And uh, so up here is where the master clock is, this, this unit right here. And I have a test lead uh, hooked up to it. That test lead goes over to the oscilloscope so we can take a look at the output of the first, the uh, first oscillator. Let me talk a little bit about that in the uh, block diagram. All right, I don't know if you guys can read this easily, but uh, we have um, we have the dial indicator on the front to set the frequency that goes into D to A. So that sets some voltage. The voltage then goes into a voltage controlled oscillator. There's actually two of them and they mix together to give the final thing. And this thing right here is the master oscillator. So let's take a look at whether this is working and whether it's giving a sine wave. So we will kind of probe this right here. All right. And they'll flip the switches and we should get some type of oscillation out of this thing. That then just goes into a bunch of amplifiers and air amplifiers and all this other stuff and the feedback and PLL and all that stuff. So, uh, but this is the master, uh, the master thing up here. So let's, uh, Let's take a look at that. All right, this is a schematic. I know it's going to be hard to read, um, but uh, this is oscillator number one. This is oscillator number two, and this is the mixer. So this oscillator feeds into the mixer. This one feeds into the mixer. You know it's a mixer because there's a bridge diode and there's a transformer input, transformer output. And uh, then that just gets amplified and goes on its merry way. All right, so uh, there is a broad oscillator that goes between one and 500 megahertz. And then there's this little tweaky one that goes just a tiny little bit for fine tuning. Um, and so I'm not sure what frequency ranges this one goes between. But anyway, um, we will monitor here and see if it's working. And then we'll flip these switches and we'll flip these switches and see if that does anything on the output. All right, so I currently have uh, the uh, oscillator set to 100 megahertz and we're getting 100.04, pretty good. It's not locked or anything, right? And if I go to 200, uh, 300, 400, and 500, my scope is uh, only 350, but it will still display a 500 megahertz signal and measure. Oops. All right. So um, I showed that you can do the small, uh, the big steps. Let's look at the small steps. The small steps come from this vernier on the front. If you take it out of cal, then you can move the frequencies just a tiny little bit, plus or minus uh, three kilohertz. All right. So let's see if we can watch this thing. Uh, change plus or minus three, three kilohertz. Okay. And that's going to be hard to see. Uh, let's go to six figures on the counter. All right. I'm going to take, so it's one, about 190. I'll take it out of Cal. And we are 187 mid, mid. If I go low, three kilohertz on 87 mid 193 and then high yeah it's not working all right so i said that's two oscillators uh, one up here and one down here this is the lower frequency one with a narrow range so the 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 upper one has a, a connector the mix has a connector and the low has a connector. So let's look at the low individually. First, we were, we were looking here at the mix. Let's look at the low. Okay, so we're here at around uh, 
Ah, what is that? Around 13, 12, 13 megahertz. It seems to be wandering all over the place, which I don't think is good. But maybe it's just a, that it's not locked. It's searching. Let's go into um, manual. And uh, so in manual, it uh, it's also jumping us around 14. If I go to minus 3 kilohertz, it goes down to around 12. And if I go to plus 3 kilohertz, it's up here around... 11, yeah, oh, there's 12, uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, so, yeah, I don't know what's going on, all right, let's uh, look inside this thing and see if there's any uh, service replaceable parts, <laughs> um, Maybe we can make it work better to my likings, at least my understanding, which is very, very poor. But it is what it is. And that's why you repair instruments. I mean, it'd be nice to have a working instrument in the long run. That would be nice. Do I need this instrument? No, I've got other instruments that are better that does this job. But in repairing it, I learned a whole bunch, and I have a whole bunch of fun, and that's my hobby. So, it is what it is. Let's open this up. There we go. All right, so these potentiometers stick through some holes in the top, so they're available on the outside. Ah, uh, that's right. This is the one that has the uh, cans, and I don't remember if I replaced any capacitors on this one or not. Uh, let's see here. The power comes in on these two pins, and they go into some nice-looking capacitors. And then there's some nice-looking capacitors on the back as well. I think these capacitors don't go bad, but could be wrong. And then we've got these cans that are soldered shut. So who knows what's inside there? I imagine this is oscillator, oscillator, mixer. Hey, and there's the uh, transformer there. That's the mixer transformer. And um, I really don't seem to be getting signals on these two connectors. I do get a signal here, but I don't seem to be getting the signals I would expect on these outside two which is a little unusual. Look at that black thing there. That's kind of weird. I don't know what that is. All right, so what am I looking at? Oops. Hopefully you can see this. So this thing oscillates and there's a transistor here that then feeds it into this guy. And over here, we have a, a transistor that feeds it into this guy. But the outputs, those two connectors, have the, an additional transistor and output thing, an additional transistor and output thing. So it's conceivable that the middle works and the ends don't work. But I don't really know. Yeah, what am I looking at on the output? There is... An inductor and a black thing that goes to the outside world. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to match the schematic all that well. Interesting. I hear some RF magic here. We'll have to we'll have to look at this a little more in detail. Thank you.